Natalie Camille, escorted by Dave and Judy Camille. Kevin Campbell, escorted by Eric and Mikiko Campbell. Tyler Carson, escorted by William and Lisa Carson. Maggie Chen, escorted by Jay Chen and Bo Lu. Raj Chabra, escorted by Ajay Chabra and Renu Chabra. Noelle Fremen, escorted by Dale Fremen and Joy Wolf. Jordan Galicia, escorted by Mark and Wanda Galicia. Greg Garrido, escorted by Glenn and Maria Garrido. Bryce Griffin, escorted by Timothy and Teresa Griffin. Sharia Gupta, escorted by Amit and Rimple Gupta. Rohit Gupta, escorted by Neil and Benita Gupta. Gabrielle Hawkins, escorted by Roy and Benita Hawkins. Ben Hayes, escorted by David and Sandy Hayes. Jacob Hazel, escorted by Jet and Carol Hazel. Daniel Hollister, escorted by Chris and Kathy Hollister. Laura Hopperdiesel, escorted by Clay Hopperdiesel and Tracy Patrick. Alexis Hubbard, escorted by Gregory and Melissa Hubbard. Alina Kaler, escorted by James and Alicia Kaler. Ryan Lambrick, escorted by Paul and Kimberly Lambrick. Shane Lewandowski, escorted by James and Heather Lewandowski. Nicholas Monegro, escorted by Robert McClellan and Carolyn McClellan. Erica Lowry, escorted by Juan and Killen Lowry. Sophia Mammon, escorted by Stuart and Irma Mann. Ryan Murray, escorted by Mike and Kathy Murray. Roberto Montiel, escorted by Adriana Garcia. Aranaya, escorted by Pandu and Jay Naya. Megan Nightingale, escorted by Anna and Rosie Nightingale. Avery Patore, escorted by Patrick and Noel Patore. Stephen Park, escorted by Hyungu and Mejon Park. Aditya Patil, escorted by Sandy and Sonali Patil. Carlos Perez, escorted by Carlos Perez and Luz Correa de Perez. Madison Poole, escorted by Jeff and Mitzi Poole. Murphy Price, escorted by Dean and Sharon Price. Sarah Shu, escorted by Jane Shu and Susan Ma. Avi Sinha, escorted by Rajiv and Julie Sinha. Tristy Sinha, escorted by Jayshree and Rak Rak Rakesh Sinha. Steven Stankus, escorted by Eric Stankus and Tina Stankus. Gus Swift, escorted by Peter and Hetty Swift. Wyatt Taylor, escorted by Chris and Chiomara Taylor. Camilo Villamizar, escorted by Luis Villamizar and Patricia Pico. And last but not least, Rin Rayford, escorted by Jonathan and Linda Rayford. Everybody, 
Let's give these seniors a huge round of applause. It's halftime, presented by West Point Buick GMC here at Rhodes Stadium, Katy, Texas. Patrick Creighton, the coach, Derek Jones with you at the half. Seven Lake Spartans with a 24 to 21 lead over the Morton Ranch Mavericks. This game, playoff position on the line. There's only one spot left in 196A as uh, the Katy Tigers, Single Ranch Cougars, and Straight Jesuit all have locked up playoff spots. Fourth spot remaining, and this is the battle for that spot. For the Mavericks, it's winning in. For the Spartans, it's not just win, but it's win by 12. And we were, you know, we were talking uh, during halftime, and you know, this whole complicated formula of, you know, you got to win by a certain amount of points and common opponents. You know, just thinking about a much simpler time when if you won head to head, you won. Like that was the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker is if you have the same record, but I beat you, then I go in because I beat you. Not. Well, you know, I got to beat you by this many points. We get the same thing, and maybe you beat somebody else better than I. You know, <laughs> if you to me, if you beat a team head to head, you should go win. Yeah, that's how it should be. I mean, that's old school football. I mean, we lined up, you know, neutral position or neutral place or wherever, and we we lined it up, and I, I beat you fair and square. I mean, I'm better than you. Our team is better. Same thing happened in college football last year. You know, you had TC and the Baylor. You know, shenanigans that was going on. One team beat another team, but ends up being ranked higher than the other team. I mean, it just, you know, sports have changed definitely over the years with all these, uh, you know, analytics and everything else that goes on. Uh, but, uh, you know, head to head, they lost, you know, fair and square, and it, it should be that way. But uh, for whatever reason, it's not. You know, Morton Ranch has to uh, to win in their end, of course, because their record is better than, than these other teams. Uh, but uh, Seven Lakes still has an opportunity. If they win, they win by a certain amount of points. You know, then they qualify. I mean, it's uh, one of those things. It just ends up that way. And, I mean, the players know it for Seven Lakes. And, of course, the players from Morton Ranch, they're aware of the same thing, uh, knowing that if they can just stay close. I mean, of course, you're not trying to lose the game by any means. But if you stay close enough, I mean, you're still going to end up winning even though you didn't win. So, I mean, it, uh, it makes it interesting football. And coming down to the last game of the season, it's amazing that it's already the last game, you know, the regular season anyway. Uh, looking forward to uh, kicking off the uh, the playoffs. So let's finish up this last game and and uh, you know see who's going to be the last representative for uh, District 196A. You know, it's funny you bring up the Big 12 from last year because if ever a conference did everything it can to screw itself, <laughs> uh, it did exactly that last year when you know the commissioner of your conference says, "Well, we don't need a championship game because we every team plays each other and head-to-head -head wins." So. Baylor beats TCU head-to-head, -head and the commissioner comes out and goes, well, we're going to have a split champion. What? <laughs> How can you go against your own bylaws? Well, congratulations. You got both your teams on the outside of the first ever college football playoff because you screwed Baylor. Yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, with the way the outlook is you know, going on right now around the country, the, the proper sentiment was one team. Head-to-head -head was another team. And so, hey, okay, well, since the country likes this team, we feel like they have better opportunity to get opportunity to play, you know, for the championship, you know, but it ended up working out where neither team was like, okay, hey, you can't decide, so we as a nation or country can't decide either, so neither one of you guys get to play with us. Yeah, well, that's when, you know, uh, the Big Ten decided to have Wisconsin lay down and die for Ohio State so they could win 157000 to nothing <laughs> and somehow squeak in with enough votes. I'm not saying that there was a plan on that, but boy, it sure looked that no, way. It looked that way. <laughs> <laughs> Spartans will kick off to the Mavericks to open up the second half. Smalls will kick right to left. High end over end kick. It'll be fielded at the five. Cross at 10, 15, middle of the field, 20, and stacked up at the 25-yard line. And the Mavericks will have their first possession of the second half as Michael White returns that ball 20 yards to the 25-yard line. Spartans with a 24-21 lead thanks to a 38-yard field goal with four ticks of the clock remaining.
Nathan Farewell from 38 connected right before the half. They lead it 24-21. Nick Hernandez under center eye set. Dixon, he's hitting the backfield and driven back for a loss. That's a big time hit from uh, Keith Simpson for the Spartans. That was a big, big hit. Yeah, they definitely have to make some kind of adjustments. They had a hard time stopping Morton Ranch with the option early in the first half. So coming down the second half, whatever adjustments uh, Seven Lakes decided to make, we're going to see if those work. Second and 11 from the 24, I set. Hernandez keeping himself around the left side. He's got some room and dripped down from behind about the 30-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup. Hernandez with the carry. You know, much like you were saying earlier in this game, Coach, the Mavericks get squatted down. And it's hard to see them behind those big linemen. And Hernandez does a good job of, of, you know, sleight of hand of, you know, looks like he's giving the ball off. They can't really see who has the ball. And that misdirection makes some, some openings for them. Mm -hmm. Here, Hernandez on the keep again. He's got the edge across midfield, heading down the near sideline. Across the 30 and run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Yeah, that's a big-time play for Mr. Hernandez, exactly what you said. When you run this veer, when you run the, the option-type offense, you have your quarterback down low. That's a part of your play. It's almost like a part of your scheme. I mean, you want to hide. You want to get behind those big fellows. And uh, what you're trying to do is, is simple. You're just trying to cause a little bit of hesitation. That little bit of uncertainty on the defense allows the, the fullback, allows the running back, and have the good rotation uh, to get on that outside. I set Hernandez under center. Keeps it himself. Now pitch to Dixon. Left side is going to get popped, but he stays on his feet. Running backwards now on the wrong side of the 35. Spins his way around, and he gets himself into no man's land, and he's going to be taken down to the 35-yard line. That's a 10-yard loss. Yeah, that's a, a big-time swarm going on right there. But the first guy always wants to come up. He wants to try to wrap up. I mean, I know you, you, you see all the highlights, ESPN, and you want to make that big hit. Wrap up. Make sure you make the tackle because the last thing you want to do is have that big hit, and yet the crowd sees it, everyone sees it, and they're all excited, but the young man rolls out of it and takes it to the house. The next thing you know, that causes you to lose the game. Make sure you always play sound, fundamental football at all times. Second and 19 from the 34-yard line. Offset, I left. Hernandez sets up the screen. It's caught at the 40. That's White, shakes a guy at the 35. Gets up to about the 30-yard line. So about a four-yard pickup, even though he had a run about 12 yards to get it. Yeah, it's a uh, nice little screen screen pass from Morton Ranch. Once again, defender had an opportunity to make that tackle. You know, a lot of guys nowadays, they want to always go low, trying to knock people down. A lot of times, these guys have nice core. They have nice base. Use your fundamentals. Use nice, sound fundamentals and make your tackle. I set. Dixon's a deep back. Excuse me, that's White the deep back. Here's Hernandez looking to throw. Deep looking towards the end zone. It is... Intercepted. Four players went up for that football, and the guy who came down with it is Brian Sturgis. Interception in the end zone for the touchback, and the Spartans' defense stands. That's a big-time interception from Mr. Sturgis. I mean, he's had a heck of a season back there. He's a senior. Uh, showing that senior leadership. I mean, the ball was kind of uh, floated up there a little bit too much air underneath. Jump ball, and of course, he's been winning that jump ball most of the most of the year. It's a big play for the defense. Had a hard time stopping and slowing down Morton Ranch most of the night. I mean, your defense have come through for you. Spartans pitch back to Brock Sturgis, and it was over his head. He winds up diving on it back at the 10-yard line. Yeah, last thing you want to do is give it right back. Uh, after your defense has made a, a real big play for you. You have to have sound offense. You want to make sure you come out and do what you need to do to try to move the ball, keep the, keep the chains moving, and keep your defense off the sideline so they can get some more rest. And once again, it's, uh, the more they're out there, the longer it works for Morton Ranch. Ten-yard loss. It's second and 20. Two receivers to the left. Mm. 
Moore trying to line everybody up. In the gun, takes a snap, keeps himself up the middle, runs into a stack of bodies and goes nowhere. Maybe he got a yard. Yeah, this is the tough part of the game. On the, as a defensive coordinator, I'm looking in the backfield. I see Brian Moore, and about I'm 99% sure he's going to run the ball. So you can put your guys, you know, in that box. You can have your linebacker shooting the A and the B gaps. You know, it's right there by the center on both sides. I mean, you can eliminate the, the running game because you know they're not running on the outside very much. It's, it's very hard to keep a defense honest. Uh, when you're very limited in what you can do. Third and 19 from the 11. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Spartans lead 24-21 in the gun. Moore gives it to Sturgis, and he's hitting the backfield and taken down. Back at the nine-yard line, he didn't have a chance on that one. Yeah, that's uh, once again, that's tough. You have all your guys on your defensive line. I mean, they're not following any kind of keys or responsibilities once you line up back there because Seven Lakes, once again, hasn't uh, shown the, uh, the ability to pass the ball. Uh, if that's going to be the case, it's going to get harder and harder to run the ball for Seven Lakes. Sometimes when they try to run off to the edge, it seems like the play takes a long mm -hmm. time to develop. Like that play seemed to take a long time to develop, and it allowed the defense to set the edge. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Smalls punting from his own end zone. Here comes the rush, gets off a high spiral. It'll be caught at the 47 by Hernandez and fielded there. So the Mavericks will take over on the plus side of the 50 with 6.36 to go in the third quarter, down 24-21. Yeah, it's a quick turnover on downs. I mean, the defense didn't even really have a chance to get a drink of water back over there. Now they're back on the field. It's hard to keep throwing your defense out there in the line of fire I mean, because they have to continue to play sound, disciplined uh, football from that side, watching the you know, running back, the quarterback, and that dive play over and over and over again. I mean, it's going to be very hard for them to, uh, to keep pressure on if the offense doesn't try to help them a little bit more. Hernandez comes out with the Maverick offense. Michael White is the deep back. In the eye set, they'll give it up the middle to Dean. Fullback dive, he's across the 45 to about the 42-yard line. The four-yard pickup. Second and six. Two receivers wide to the left. I set Dean and White. They'll fake the give to Dean. Pitch out to White on the outside on the left side. Gets down to the 40-yard line. He's stacked up at the 39. Yeah, it's outstanding pursuit from Seven Lakes. I mean, once again, Morton Ranch is hitting that outside very well. Hernandez is really a magician with the ball. Like you said a little bit earlier, I mean, that fullback, they have to respect that dive because that dive has been uh, – you know, a, a positive weapon for them most of the night. Third and three from the 39, I said. Give us to Dean up the middle. He's going to be very close to a first down. Let's see where this spot is. That young man is strong. They spot him at the 42. He's a yard shy. It'll be fourth and one. And the Mavericks will go for it. Yeah, you don't even want to kick the ball. You're in one of the, you're in the no man's land kind of territory. You can't kick a field goal. You really don't want to kick a punt. And they haven't stopped you on most of your drives most of the night, so you should be able to get one yard. I said. They give it to Dean up the middle, and he's going to be knocked backwards. No. Pitched back now. <laughs> Dixon's got the ball on the on the near sideline. Hernandez fooled everybody. Hernandez apparently fooled everybody. Somehow he held on to that ball, and it looked like man, Dean's Dean selling that play made it work. <laughs> Holy cow! That's the option. You you ask why do teams still run the option? That's that's why because. You have to play sound, fundamental football, and it's easy because of your aggressiveness to get out of position. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Dixon up the middle. We've got a flag. 
this is going to come back. But Dean selling that play, <laughs> nobody was looking at Hernandez, who somehow hid the ball very well. And all of a sudden, Hernandez was at the 25-yard line throwing a quick lateral to Dixon, who took it down to the 11. Yeah, the option's been around a long, long time. I mean, it's uh, part of that veer and, you know, part of, you know, Coach Yeoman way back in the day, he's, he's credited for, you know, starting all this up. I mean, it's a popular offense. I said they give to Dixon left side. He's tripped up behind the line. Elliot Leger on the tackle on that. That was a, a touchdown saving tackle because there's a lot of guys who are out of position back there in that secondary. So after the false start and then the tackle for loss, it's now second down and 16 from the 17 yard line. I set, pitch Dixon right side looking for room and he's not gonna have any. Gets about the 15 yard line and that's about it. That play was strung out all the way across the field. Yeah, nice pursuit from your defense, but uh, once again, your defense has been on the field a long time so far for this drive and so far for this game. I mean, it's only a matter of time before these guys are out of position and you see uh, one, of the, one of the young men from Morton Ranch taking it down the sideline once again. We'll have a timeout on the field. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Spartans 24, Mavericks 21. It's Texas 6A High School Football on Texan Live. Come enjoy the heart of Katy, Texas, one of the most delightful cities in the Lone Star State. The best part? It's a short drive from Houston and minutes from the Energy Corridor. With places to stay and places to play, anything you'd like to eat, and an old town charm that can't be beat. Activities and fun for the entire family. Enjoy the best of both worlds in the City of Champions, Katy, Texas. For more information, go to cityofkady.com. Tune in to Fox Sports Southwest tonight after the game from 11 to midnight for the Houston High School football wrap-up show presented by Texan Drive. Join Howard Chem, Ted Johnson, Courtney Rowland, and Courtney Madden as they take you around the city with all the week's football action. The Houston High School football wrap-up show presented by Texan Drive tonight from 11 to midnight on Fox Sports Southwest. So Mavericks took a timeout on third and 13 from the 14-yard line. 3-11 to go, third quarter. They're down a field goal. I set. Dixon's the deep back. Pitch to Dixon. Right side. He's hit behind the line. Driven backwards. Back by knocked out of bounds around the 20-yard line. Another big stop by the Spartan defense. As That's two plays in a row where the Mavericks run plays. You know, they've been successful when they've pulled off these runs with misdirection and speed, and the last two plays seem to have developed very slowly. Yeah, it, uh, I'm not going to say the smoke and mirrors, but uh, you know when they could hide, hide the ball, had a lot of deception, they've had some nice plays, but uh, anytime Seven Lakes can actually see what's going on, they seem to snuff it out. Actually, it was a, a fake reverse on that play, and if he would have actually given it to the reverse guy, I mean, he had a lot of room out there, but uh, nice tackle from Justin Dittman and the Seven Lakes Spartans. Joseph Batiste will attempt a 36-yard field goal from the near hash. Kick is up, has the distance, and it is good. 36-yard field goal by Joseph Batiste. We're tied at 24, 217 to go third quarter. This is Texas 6A High School Football on Texan Live. At Panera, we decided a long time ago to avoid the easy road and switch to antibiotic-free chicken. That decision set a lot of things in motion. So now it's not just chickens raised this way. It's more ingredients you can trust, which has taught us a lesson. Sometimes what you think is the harder road turns out to be the only one worth being on. Panera Bread. Live consciously. Eat deliciously. 36-yard field goal by Joseph Batiste has this game tied up at 24. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. 
Folks, Texan Live, your new home for Houston High School sports. Three games on tap tomorrow, 11 a.m., the undefeated Katie Tigers take on the undefeated Cinco Ranch Cougars. The District 19-6A title on the line. Also, Barbers Hill takes on Kingwood Park. And the nightcap, Tompkins faces Katie Taylor. Texan Live, your new home for Houston High School sports. Batiste lines his team up. He'll kick it off from the 40. Short kick and over end. It'll be fielded at the 15. Across the 20. Tries to look for room in the middle of the field. Doesn't find much. Is across the 25 to the 27 yard line. And the Spartans will take over. They need to score. As we've said, this game playoff spot is on the line in this game. Spartans have to win by 12 or the Mavericks will go to the playoffs. And Spartans defense has struggled to slow down that Maverick offense. And as we've seen kind of all year, the Spartans offense sometimes looks tremendous and they're getting, you know, chunks, chunks, chunks. And then other times they look like they can't get out of their own way. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, it's uh, very inconsistent. I mean, it's been that way all season long. I mean, they've had, you know, different quarterbacks in there trying to, uh, you know, find some kind of continuity. Uh, you know, the running backs part has been the same, but they brought up different wide receivers as well, changed some of the linemen as well, trying to find, you know, a group that could be a little bit more cohesive and a little bit more consistent. But, uh, I mean, in a game like this, you need to have everything firing. You need to be on, uh, on point on everything that you do from the line all the way to the uh, quarterbacks to the receivers. At this point of the season, with the game on the line, you need to have everything, uh, you know, all in the same, you know, all in sync, basically. And uh, right now they're still trying to work on getting that done. Fans, make sure to log on to TexanLive.com each and every week to vote for the Cavenders Player of the Week. Then tune in every Friday night to the Houston High School Football Wrap-Up Show presented by Texan Drive to see who Courtney Madden showcases as the Cavenders Player of the Week on Fox Sports Southwest. Spartans come to the line, first and 10 from their own 28. In the gun, split backfield, handoff, Brock Sturgis up the middle, and he's across the 30 to about the 32. Cam Thomas in at quarterback. And we've got another timeout on the field. Minute 56 to go, third quarter. We're tied at 24. This is Texas 6A High School football on Texan Live. Register online at cesperformance.com for your sports performance program. cesperformance.com has multi-month memberships and team training. cesperformance.com has baseline performance testing included with every athletic development program. Schedule your athletic evaluation at cesperformance.com so there's no cost or commitment. Be prolific at cesperformance.com. Up the middle. This is going to come back. That flag came in way early, so this is likely to be false start. Yeah, it's always tough when you uh, bring another quarterback in and he's got a different voice, uh, a different uh, you know, tone when he talks. His dialect is a little bit different, so uh, it uh, kind of gets your guys a little bit off, uh, off kilter a little. So we have offsetting penalties and the play will stand. First down as Sturgis gets forward to the 39. First and 10 from their own 39. Minute 26 remaining, third quarter. We're tied at 24. More back in the game, in the gun. Two receivers right. Takes a snap, keeps it himself, looking for room, and he is stacked up. Nowhere to go. And that time, maybe the extra attempt to juke a little bit probably might have cost him a couple of yards as he seemed to juke his way right into the waiting arms of a defender. 
Yeah, so I mean, that he's very, very quick, but uh, sometimes you juke a little too much instead of hitting the hole, but he's trying to find something. He's trying to make that big play. I mean, he's Mr. Mr. Everything for, for Seven Lakes. I mean, he's a wide receiver, he's a quarterback. I mean, he's punt on the kickoff return, punt return. I mean, he's uh, he's got to be getting tired. Second and ten, Moore in the gun. Takes a snap. Gives right side, Sturgis. He's got a head of steam, and he's across midfield the first down to the 49-yard line. That's a big run off the right-hand side, giving the ball to a – the super sophomore who's had an outstanding season once again. I mean, they're going to try to have to mix him in a lot more, if nothing else, just to give uh, Brian Moore a little bit of a, of a breather. First and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Spartans are going to let time expire here in the third quarter. After three quarters of play, we are knotted at 24 with a playoff spot on the line, Spartans, Mavericks, fourth quarter next. This is Texas 6A High School Football on Texan Live. For a limited time, get $8,000 savings off MSRP on 2015 GMC Yukons. Even 2015 GMC Sierra 1500s for just $25.9. Huge savings and selection only at West Point View at GMC. Easy to get to on the Katy Freeway. Exit Parker Cypress both ways. We look forward to seeing you soon. West Point. Buick GMC. A better place to buy. Road Stadium, Katy, Texas. About to begin the fourth quarter. Seven Lake Spartans, Morton Ranch Mavericks tied at 24. For a shot to go to the playoffs, District 19-6A. First and 10 Spartans from their own 49. Now moving left to right. Moore in the gun. Sturgis to his left. Two receivers right. Give is to Sturgis. Right side across midfield. Runs over his own man. He's taken down about the 48-yard line. Kind of ran into Andy Garcia on that play. Was trying to throw him a block. Yeah, Sturgis trying to go downhill. Keevan Bostic, one of the uh, defenders, making the tackle for Morton Ranch. Morton Ranch is exactly where they want to be right now. I mean, the score is obviously is tied. Time is running out. And at the uh, pace that Seven Lakes is doing, I mean, it just doesn't appear that they're going to have the opportunity to get an extra, extra touchdown or so. They do not play up-tempo. Two receivers, far to the left. Moore in the gun, Sturgis to his right. Takes a snap, give us to Sturgis. Left side, he's got the 45 to the 44-yard line. And four-yard pickup. To be third down. And about three. Thomas and O'Neill wide to the right. Split backfield. Moore in the gun. He's got himself. He's in trouble. And he's been taken down at midfield. Just too many white shirts to outrun, coach. Yeah, like I say, he's been he's been on everything that Seven Lakes has. I mean, he's he's probably even getting water for the guys. I mean, they've used this this young man most of the night. I mean, he's an outstanding uh, athlete, but and you know, he needs just a little bit more help. They need to come up with a little bit uh, something else. I mean, because it's just uh, it's just hard for one man uh, to to do all this. Smalls on to punt. Takes a snap, gets off a high punt, and Hernandez muffs the punt, but fortunately for him, a teammate dives on it back at the 13-yard line. That was almost disaster for the Mavericks. 9.43 to go in this contest, and the Mavericks will take over first and 10 from their own 13-yard line. 
Yeah, most of this game, the field position that uh, Morton Ranch has been in deep, you know, deep territory. So from that standpoint, Seven Lakes, the special teams has, has kind of come through for them. You know, on that play on the punt, guys, when you go down there on the field, make sure you don't let up. Always expect the uh, return guy to, to muff the ball a little bit more heads up and Morton Ranch uh, would have turned that ball over. Moving right to left, two receivers to the left, I said. Go up the middle to the fullback, Dean. And he's across the 15 to the 16-yard line. It's a three-yard pickup. You know, poor Elijah Dean, every play he gets is straight up the middle into the teeth <laughs> of the defense. But the guy gets three, four, five yards every time. No, he runs hard. I mean, he's, he's used to it with his offense. I set, quick throw, it's complete. Across the 25 with the first down to the 30 and the 31-yard line is Austin Richardson. That little quick hitch route. First and 10 for the Mavericks from their own 31. 8.50 to go, clock rolling. Tied at 24. I set, Hernandez gives it to Dean up the middle. He's got across the 35 to the 36. Another five yard pickup for Elijah Dean right up the middle. Simple ground and pound. I mean, you give the ball to your fullback, of course, once again, you know, they're playing the clock as well. I mean, they, they're not in a big hurry. Pro set, I. Hernandez will keep it now, he'll pitch it out to Dixon. Oh, he gets hit at the 35. Hernandez might have telegraphed that pitch as Dixon was swarmed as he went to take that pitch and he got hit back at the 34 yard line. Yeah, that's one of the first ones that he actually telegraphed. I mean, he's been a magician, you know, hiding that ball all night long and has kept us, uh, you know, seven lakes on their heel. You know, most of the game, the majority of the game. So that extra look he took just to kind of find where Dixon was at gave him away. Third and seven from the 34. Two receivers right. I said, wide receiver screen completed the 30. Cross the 35, breaks a tackle, and he might have a first down. Yeah, he's going to be very close on that. That's Austin Richardson again. He's kind of similar to what uh, Brian Moore is. He jumps back at quarterback. He's at receiver. Uh, he also jumps back at the running back position as well for, for Morton Ranch. I'll say Richardson out of bounds at the 40, so that'll bring up fourth and one. This is a huge, huge play for the Spartans with 7.20 to go in this game. If they can get off the field here, they'll get tremendous field position. I said. Give Dixon, he's got the first down. He bobbled it and he almost lost it, but got a hand on it and was able to push that pile forward. Dixon gets the first down. And that's a big first down for the Mavericks. That keeps them with the ball and the clock moving. We said they don't have to win. They just can't lose by 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, not, you're not, not playing to win, but and yeah, they don't have to. Uh, they have two scenarios. They can lose and lose close, or they can uh, win this game. They still win. You have to beat the champ by pinfall or submission. <laughs> <laughs> Hernandez throwing deep over the middle, and he is intercepted. Ill-advised throw is picked off at the 20-yard line. Across the 30, 35, 40-yard line, down the sideline to the 42-yard line. Hunter Parker with the interception. And coach that, right after getting the first down and keeping the ball, that was a terribly thrown pass. Yeah, and it uh, wasn't the best uh, best time to, uh, to try to throw that pass. I mean, yeah, you just got the first down, and I'm sure you're trying to, the element of surprise to try to get the ball deep. You know, but and, you know, Seven Lakes has some guys deep back there. 
I mean, you don't really want to try to do that play because now it gives them an opportunity to get the ball. But and you did what you want to do as far as run the clock down. I mean, it's only six minutes left. There's not a lot more possessions left in this game. And that was just Hunter Parker playing center field. Yeah, pretty much. Spartans now with the ball. First and 10 from their own 42. 6.37 to go in this game. We're tied at 24. Moore keeps it himself. Swarmed in the backfield and taken down at the 40-yard line. Might have been an uncalled face mask on that as well. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you hate to always, you hate to get out of your game plan, but at this point, I mean, I'm probably bringing in uh, Cameron Thomas at the quarterback, and I'm putting Brian Moore at the wide receiver, and we're running, we're running eights and nines, which is the go routes and the post routes, because we need to score quick, get the ball back, and try to score again if we're going to try to uh, to get in this uh, end zone. Moore in the gun, split backfield, takes a snap, handoff, Sturgis, right side, and he's up to about the 44. A four-yard pickup, be third and eight. For a team that needs to score and score quickly because they need to win by two touchdowns, there is no sense of urgency in this offense. Uh, no, and that's like I said, that's uh, you can see some of the uh, the fan fans have the uh, angst going on. I mean, they understand what the uh, situation is as well, and and you're exactly right. I mean, you definitely have to pick up the tempo. It's no huddle at this point. Two receivers left. More in the gun. Keeps it himself. Looking for room left side. He's got the edge across midfield. Makes the guy miss. Gets across the 45 to the 44-yard line. It's a first down for the Spartans. Another nice run from uh, Mr. Brian Moore. But uh, once again, Morton Ranch, you're not, you don't mind that. As long as you keep it in front of you, make sure you make the tackle. I mean, like I said, the clock is your friend at this point. Five minutes in counting. It's just not enough time left. First and 10 from the Maverick, 44 ball on the far left hash. Two receivers left side, split backfield. Morris in the gun, takes a snap. Give us to Sturgis, and he is wrapped up in the backfield. Four white jerseys on the other side of the line of scrimmage on that one, Coach. Yeah, it's nice penetration. Once again, they they don't have to read any pass keys You know, when uh, Mr. Moore is in there. Not saying that he can't pass, but the way the game plan is set, they're running similar to a Wildcat formation. So you put all your guys you can in the box, and you dare them to beat you deep is what the, what the, uh, the defensive scheme is. Second and 13 from the 47. 4.15 to go. Clock still rolling. That's 40, 50 seconds for one play. I said Sturgis, right side, stiff arms a defender across the 40 and driven out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So you third and four from the 38. They ran two plays in 57 seconds, and they need to score two touchdowns. Yeah, when you're... When you're up against the clock, you have to uh, definitely try to speed up the offense. But this is what they've done, you know, for their season. This is their offense. So it's kind of hard to uh, do something now that you haven't really done most of the year. Moore in the gun. Sturgis to his left. Jet motion. Takes a snap. Keeps it himself. Up the middle. Slips and falls at the 35. And down at the 34-yard line. Moore was trying to, he made one guy miss, tried to make a second guy miss, and hit the ice skates. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Right when he's about to accelerate. Say the yard line, the yard line marker reached up and grabbed you down. <laughs> Turf monster. It gets, you, it gets everybody every now and then. Fourth and one from the 34. I set. Moore under center. Keeps it himself. Gets behind his big center and He's got enough to move the sticks. 3.22 remaining in this contest. Spartans, Mavericks tied at 24. Clock rolling. Spartans have all three timeouts. He's still there. They're not getting out of the huddle. This, well, and only getting out of the huddle in this 15 seconds on the play clock. 
I don't understand why there's no sense of urgency. Here comes the jet motion. Snap. Moore will keep it himself. Cuts back to the left side. And he ripped down behind the line back at the 36-yard line. Seemed like he wasn't sure where he wanted to go with that. Two forty-one on the clock, fourth quarter. Timeout on the field. Fans, the Houston High School playoffs begin next week, and Texan Live will be your home for the postseason after agreeing to a partnership with the UIL and Fox Sports Southwest. Get your tickets to the state championships held at NRG Stadium right here in Houston by following the UIL link on TexanLive.com. Then follow your team on the road to the state championships at the home. For Houston High School Sports, TexanLive.com. 2.41 remains in this contest. Spartans and Mavericks tied at 24. And the Spartans don't need just to score. They need to score quickly. And then they need to get the ball back. And then they need to get the ball back. Yeah, I just don't think there's enough time to do that. The way Morton Ranch runs their offense, I mean, it uh, doesn't appear likely. This possession now close to four minutes long. Second down and 13 from the 36. Two receivers to the left, more in the gun. Takes a snap, keeps it himself up the middle and stumbles forward to the 35-yard line, and Coach, they just don't have time for this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of tough right now. I mean, at, at this uh, point of the game, I mean, the approach right now is like they're running the clock to uh, try to kick a field goal to win the game, and I mean, I'm not sure that uh, that may be the best strategy. That's Unless there's something that, uh, you know, something that we, you know, we don't know. Say, if they need 12 points to, to go to the playoffs, a, a three-point win is a Pyrrhic victory. Yeah. Two receivers right in the gun. Moore takes a snap. Rolls right, looking to throw. Fires right side in and out of the hands of his intended receiver on the sideline. That would have been good for a first down. That ball hit him right in the numbers. And Cam Thomas probably wants that one back. Now we got another timeout on the field. Two minutes, one second to go in this contest. We're tied at 24. It's Texas 6A High School football on Texan Live. Howdy, Egg. Thanks for all your support this past year. Don't adjust your TV. In support of breast cancer awareness, West Point Buick GMC is donating a portion of every vehicle sale to the American Cancer Society. So if you want a new vehicle, come experience the spirit of Aggieland and help us beat the hell out of cancer too. West Point Buick GMC, easy to get to on the Katy Freeway. Exit Parker Cypress both ways. West Point is just a better place to buy. West Point Buick GMC, a better place to buy. Road Stadium, Katy, Texas. Patrick Creighton, the coach, Derek Jones with you. Two minutes, one second remain in this contest. Spartans and Mavericks tied at 24 with a spot to go to the playoffs in District 19 6A on the line. On fourth and 12, the Spartans bring out the punt team. Which they will try to pin the Mavericks deep here. Smalls on to punt. No rush, angles the kick towards the near corner. Takes a great bounce, lands at the three, and it'll get downed at the 10-yard line. So they get, the, they get the punt they wanted. They pin the Mavericks deep, but it's Mavericks football with a minute and 51 seconds to go in a tie ball game. And, Coach, if this game goes to overtime, the Spartans have no chance mm -hmm. to advance to the playoffs. They couldn't possibly win by 12. Already going to take two miracles for them to score that many points 
in in basically 111 seconds. Yeah, unless there's some type of scenario that uh, you know that we haven't been given, then uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, next to impossible. I said two receivers right. Hernandez with the pitch to Dixon, right side. He's got room. He's behind the defense. Across midfield. Now it's a foot race. 30-yard line, 20-yard line, 10. Shoved from behind into the end zone. Touchdown, Mavericks. Wow. 90 <laughs> yards. Yeah, I don't even know what you can say on that. That young man has had a heck of a ball game. You just toss it out to him. It's that option. I mean, I've said it over, and I'm, I'm the dead horse because you can beat me. You have to have contain. You have to have a guy on the contain guy, a guy on the quarterback, a guy waiting for that running back because that ratio, if they get you in the wrong spot, and as we said that earlier, the defense is on the field over and over and over again. Sooner or later, they're going to get out of position, and that's what happens. Batiste's extra point is good. 90-yard touchdown run, Dartavius Dixon. And the Mavericks have stunned this crowd. They lead at 31-24, minute 37 to go, fourth quarter. This is Texas 6A High School football on Texan Live. Dartavius Dixon just went 90 yards, almost waving goodbye to the defense at midfield. And the Mavericks have stunned this crowd. Minute 37 remaining, and the Mavericks take a 31 to 24 lead. But see, short kickoff fielded at the 15. Across the 20 to the 25 and ridden down. That almost looked like, you know, uh, <laughs> calf steering. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, Mr. Dixon, he's run for over 200 yards tonight. I mean, it, uh, you know, I always say this analogy because I just like video games, but uh, it looked like a video game. I mean, it's just up and down the field. I mean, he's had a big time game tonight exactly when his team needed. I mean, you're trying to get to the playoffs. Like I say, you shouldn't be finding yourself at this point of the season. You should know who you are, and you should be able to go out and execute. And Morton Ranch has come up with big plays tonight. I mean, they're a running team, and they've done exactly what they need to do. To Which button himself. is speed boost? Because that's <laughs> the one he hit. Cam Thomas at quarterback in the gun, three receivers to the left. Maverick show blitz, Thomas. Under pressure, and down he goes at the 23-yard line. That was actually a delay handoff. It's supposed to come back to the, uh, to the left-hand side, but uh, they missed, missed on the handoff, and that's what happens when you change quarterbacks like that. I mean, you have one quarterback that's used to getting all the reps, and when you're not in, you don't have that, you don't have that rhythm. Moore out wide to the right, two receivers each side, Thomas in the gun. Barks his signal, takes a snap, quick throw. It's complete to Moore at the 30, and then he's sandwiched. The third and five. 53 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. And the Spartans will take a timeout. Down 31-24. It's Texas 6A High School football on Texan Live. Patrick Creighton, the coach, Derek Jones with you from Rhodes Stadium in Katy, Texas. Well, the Morton Ranch Mavericks are 53 seconds away from clinching the fourth playoff seed in District 19 6A. They lead 31 24 over the Spartans. Spartans, third and five from their own 30. 53 ticks left. 
Thomas in the gun, three receivers left. Takes a snap. Handoff. Sturgis across the 35 to the 40. Loses his helmet when he goes down. It's enough for the first down, but the clock still running with 47 seconds. Spartans with one timeout. Thomas Barking is at his line, and they're going to take their final timeout here. 39 seconds to go at their own 40-yard line, and they're down a touchdown. And, Coach, this is – this entire fourth quarter has been a self-fulfilling prophecy for the Spartans in that they never have a sense of urgency. That They're always taking their time in and out of the offense. They stall out, and now with 39 seconds down a touchdown, now all of a sudden we have urgency. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, about five to uh, six seconds running off the clock before that timeout, it, uh, it's, it's clock management. I mean, it's a little bit of, uh, of all that. You've had that all season that you've kind of been dealing with, and I mean, it's just no rhythm, you know, no consistency going on. It's going to be very hard at this point. I mean, you're coming down to uh, the final seconds. You don't have any timeouts. I mean, of course, you can get first downs and stop the clock. You can run out routes, but uh, and they hadn't had a lot of passing success tonight. Thomas in the gun, Sturgis to his right, two receivers each side. Takes the snap, looks to throw, steps up in the pocket, nowhere to go. He's in trouble, and he's going to go down at the 40-yard line. Thomas is yelling at his team to hurry up and get to the line. They're under 25 seconds. See, at that, when you, you need to just throw the ball out of bounds once you get out of the tackle box on that play. 15 seconds to go. Thomas... Steps up and fires one deep down the right side, and it is intercepted at the 16-yard line. Darian Young comes down with the football, and the Mavericks have punched their ticket to the playoffs. Yeah, this has happened before. That seems to always come down to the final game of the season between the Mavericks and uh, in the Seven Lake Spartans, and uh, the Mavericks have come up on the winning side uh, more than the Spartans have. Eight seconds remaining in this fourth quarter, and nothing to do now for the Mavericks except to practice victory formation. Yeah, line up in victory formation, uh, take a knee, and uh, you know celebrate uh, Securing that fourth spot, District 19-6A. It's exciting football. Of course, you got your Katie, you got your Cinco. Straight Jesuit punched their ticket, and now uh, Morton Ranch will punch theirs. It's going to be a lot of fun going on at uh, MRHS. Nick Hernandez takes the knee, gives the ball to the official, and the Mavericks begin the celebration. They will go to the playoffs in 19-6A after a 31-24 victory over the Seven Lake Spartans. Dartavius Dixon had himself a night. Over 200 yards and three touchdowns. That's exactly what you want. I mean, he's their big time playmaker on their side. I mean, but the thing is, is that, you know, both teams went out and they, they played, you know, their best game, had opportunities. Uh, but Seven Lakes, you know, they, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with the inconsistency, but they've been trying to find that all season long. I mean, so it, uh, it's just a precursor of everything that's taking place all season long to the final game to need, you know, that execution and not be able to come through with it. Uh, and kudos to Morton Ranch for coming through, doing what they do. I mean, they run the option, they run the veer, and a lot of people talk bad about the option and the veer, but it's a successful offense. And if, uh, if you don't believe me, you can go down there and talk to Mr. Dixon right now. He'll tell you 200 reasons why it is successful. Well, Dartavius Dixon, I would give my vote as player of the game. Not only 200 yards and three touchdowns, but the backbreaker, the 90-yard run late in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. to give his team the final margin of victory as the Morton Ranch Mavericks will go to the playoffs as the four seed in District 19-6A. Say thank you to our executive producer, Burt Brocker, Andrew Martin, our technical producer here at Rhodes Stadium. For the coach, Derek Jones, I'm Patrick Creighton saying good night from Katy, Texas. <laughs>